Hey, hey, everybody, Tim here, Gray Man Poda, amateur radio call sign, November Whiskey, Nine Foxtrot. Well, it's about a week after hamcation. I am back home in Indiana, and boy, let me tell you, it is cold and snowy outside. I kind of wish I'd just stay down in Florida. But while I was there in Florida, I did get an opportunity to enjoy some nice weather, meet up with some old friends, and make some new friends. Now, while I was there, uh, having an opportunity to walk around the uh, show floor, I did get a chance to uh, catch up with uh, Bob Whiskey, Oscar Six Whiskey, from the Long Island CW Club. Talk a little bit more about this device right here. Now, if you guys are not aware, I have a speech frequency hearing loss in both ears, and I also have bilateral tinnitus. So hearing tones on the radio can become very difficult for me. And quite honestly, back in the pandemic, when I first tried learning CW, uh, I got frustrated and quit. Now I'll put a link to a video right up here that actually goes more in depth in, in my story and how I found the Long Island CW Club and how I found the haptic feedback device. So while we're there at Hamcation, my friend Bill, Kilo Zero Whiskey Hotel Whiskey, and you guys might know him as Ham Radio Tectonics here on uh, YouTube, and I got a chance to sit down with Bob from the Long Island CW Club and actually go more in depth on this device here and get a good full technical explanation on how it works. So without further ado, let's go ahead and go to that video, but make sure you stick around to the end uh, as while we were there this weekend and talking with Bob, we kind of discovered another, uh, another opportunity that this device can be used for. So about a year, year and a fraction ago, LACW had some folks looking at developing haptic assist device for folks who had compromised hearing. Either they used to operate CW, they were getting older and their hearing was going away, maybe they were a kid that wanted to learn CW but didn't have the hearing in the first place. So there was a team of folks in LACW working on the project, I got wind of that and I joined them. This is, uh, I took off with the design and this is what came out of it, okay? The box has two halves to it, if you will. There's one side of it, which is an input filter. Okay? There's some relatively straightforward electronics in here, which is very good at filtering out a single tone. And it's adjustable for the frequency of that tone, and the front end has an adjustable sensitivity. Okay? But think of it basically just as a very, very narrow, tunable filter. So ambient noise or me asking questions or talking wouldn't, as it's not doing now, wouldn't cause this to vibrate. So this is going to be operating where you've got radios tuned in. So a voice is less likely, could be, but it's more likely that background static, that background noise, the, the CW signal that's over there, a little bit off frequency, whatever. Not so much voices. But okay. the filter is working to cut those out. It's always working and it's always very, very narrow bandwidth. Okay. Okay. What you might do to set up the box is start out with adjusting the input side. When you tune your radio, you've got a side tone frequency set, 400 hertz, 450. When you hear an input signal, to zero beat it, you tune that input signal so it matches that side tone frequency, right? Right. So without transmitting, <laughs> generate your side tone, tune the box to center on that side tone frequency. Okay, so it's now looking at exactly that frequency. Where you're always gonna be going. Where you're gonna on. tune somebody right. to zero beat them. Right. Okay. Then when you go live, you've got the receiver there. Ah, there's a signal. Tune them until they the box hears them really well. Doesn't hear them, got them, doesn't hear them. There. Now you've zero beat them. Right. Okay, you've got the box helping you to zero beat. Okay. Gotcha. At that point, the frequency is good. You may adjust the sensitivity all the way down until it no longer hears the signal of interest. Then bring it up until it's registering it cleanly. Just registering it cleanly. And what you're trying to do is get that CW signal just up so it's getting above the threshold to detect cleanly, but all the other noise is staying down here. That's pretty much the optimal tuning. The other side of the box is taking the output of that filter, CW present, not present, present, not present, okay? That's a digital signal at that point. That digital signal drives the LEDs and it drives the shaker speaker. And this is just a speaker that might be found in a uh, home theater system. So it's a speaker, yeah, but it's from much lower frequencies and vibration more than sound, yeah? So let's bring in a signal. Hear the 
frequency of the feel the frequency changing. And there are particular frequencies that couple well into a desk. I can feel on my elbow as well. I mean, I can right. feel it. And that's what I was looking yeah. for. And that I can control the intensity of the vibration. If I tune below or above, it goes away. It's listening over there now. Yeah. Yeah. Tune up. It's on frequency. It's off frequency the other side. Okay. And when I put my hand on for just a moment, if I put it here, I can see a light. If I put it there, I can see a light. The three lights are so that almost anywhere you put a hand, you can see one. If you don't like the lights, put a piece of tape over. I personally, because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just looking at this device, yep. uh, trying to learn about it. Um, the lights in sim in sympathy or mm -hmm. the lights along with yep. the vibrations, I, I can decode that. When I was working with the device and trying to get a sense of using it, I was listening to it without any of the audible. And I found I could copy, you know, about that percentage using the lights alone. I could copy about that percentage using the haptic alone. Right. And if I stacked them together, I got that extra little bit of having both. That's exactly what okay. I was trying to say. Either one alone is not as good for me as both. And right. individual uses have right. different experience. Right. Another thing that we've realized, the box has an output over here, which is that digital output, the digital CW present or not, tone or not. <laughs> That's driving a solid state relay. One of our people in the club takes the power out of here and that SSR to drive an LED that he's got on the end of a really long cable that he takes into his bedroom. He can be there watching code while his wife sleeps. Another thing we realized is that I think of that as being the output for a code practice oscillator. So here we are. I'm going to plug in. And I'm going to turn off the original. And now I've got the detected CW as a very pure, no background noise tone. Make that go away. Here's the original. And all the background noise is gone. There is a um, video that we've got up on YouTube. If you search for LICW Haptic, you'll find that video. If you go to the club website, longislandcwclub.org, there's a pull down for people with various challenges on CW, visual, hearing, whatever. Uh, one of those is for hearing, and there's a link to this uh, same video. We also have some testimonials from um, our early users, and they vary on what they were using it for. We have one operator, as I mentioned, very, very proficient operator, just lost hearing for CW, back on the air again using this device. We've got an operator who can still hear well enough to operate, but it's a challenge. She uses the device to augment her hearing. So she can work, it's easier with the box. She also uses it to monitor ascending. We've got another operator, extremely high speed operator with a commercial maritime history. And he's using the box to monitor his sending to have confidence that what he's sending is what he thinks he's sending. So various levels of uh, experience finding utility with it. We've got a few folks who are not hearing compromised at all, but they use the device as one additional source of input when they're learning. So I'm hearing the code, I'm seeing the code, I'm feeling the code, that many more paths reinforcing what I'm hearing. So a variety of uses. Um, the device is sold by Long Island CW Club. If you place an order, it's 275 delivered in the U.S. Postal Service priority mail system. We've shipped to other users who are not reached by U.S. priority mail. We charge whatever the shipping is on that. Um, I'm assembling the devices. I'm a volunteer. Uh, the club reimburses me for the cost of the device. All proceeds go to the club. So hopefully you found that video informative on the haptic feedback device. And uh, I will put links to the Long Island CW Club down below, uh, including the specific page to learn more about uh, learning CW with disabilities. If you have any questions or comments, please put those down in the comment section below. Until you and I have an opportunity to meet up on the air, I have a video right over here that I think you might be interested in.